good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to this session uh, i am my name is tamsil shams i work for samsung semiconductor india research uh, in the foundry design services team my work is primarily related to the embedded systems the kernel device drivers and the dram technologies so today i will be talking at discussion on the topic of kernel based robust adaptive ddr algorithms for high temperature automotive environments uh, i was actually going to present it with my co speaker tyagu ramalingam but due to some personal emergency he is not able to join us today so let's get started Uh, so basically in this uh, presentation i will be talking about the benefits and the need for high speed uh, drams in the automotive uh, what are the fundamental issues with the dram and how using the different methodologies or the hardware features uh, we are uh, overcoming these issues uh, in the automotive industry and how these hardware features uh, we are making it efficiently work via the algorithms we are, which we have implemented in the kernel so basically the hardware features which are already there in dram how we are enabling it in the software side that we will be looking into so dram actually is one of the uh, components which will enable the future of autonomous driving uh, and these are actually three basics of autonomous driving like in vehicle infotainment gateway and the uh, ada system so dram is uh, has a very significant use case in these three things so in vehicle infotainment as you know is something a device or technology which uh, involves in the entertainment be it media social media mobile devices or navigation system in the car uh, since uh, for these we need a efficient uh, storage medium as well as uh, run time medium while performing these functions so high bandwidth uh, drams are very essential for such products then the next thing is gateway or telematics which is a key function to securely transmit the information within the vehicle normally in the previously we used to have uh, the information being sent out of the vehicle but nowadays in most of the current automotives we need to securely transmit this in within the vehicle itself so for this we may be having a large data being transmitted within the vehicles for this we need a high bandwidth drams actually and then there is adas advanced driver assistance system which actually helps the drivers to have a safe and convenient traveling uh, so in previously we used to have individual uh, components like system control systems or computation logic or system fusion which used to uh, handle these things but now we have a high end platform which does all these functions so for that we need a a storage device or a run time storage device which is very efficient and have a high bandwidth for this actually drams comes into the picture so like what is the need for high capacity bandwidth or dram in automotive although we have uh, a cheaper could uh, uh, sram memory or a non volatile memory so although in the previously most of the processors being used in automotives had very modest uh, memory requirements so the srams or non volatile memory was able to uh, accommodate such things but based on the uh, la i can say complex automotive uh, uh, logics which are needed so we need a high bandwidth drams for that actually and this also the shift to high resolution displays due to gpus or introduction of complex computing uh, for image processing for those also we need the dram logic actually uh, other than like there are a lot of drams actually there is ddr lpddr uh, gddr but we have seen that lpddr and ddr have been used by many of the processors in uh, adas and other image processing but uh, if you see with the latest uh, uh, article posted this was the test done so the automotive grade gddr6 has significant advantage over the lpddr and the ddrs in this industry because uh, the uh, actually it uses the gpu uh, it helps in the gpu computations also so we uh, the automotive grade gddrs are actually more uh, uh, performance efficient in comparison to other ddrs so but uh, using uh, dram is not like straight forward we have some risk or involved with that there can be some issues so basic with the drams is like it's a volatile memory 
so it can leak the charges very quickly so uh, based on the dram functioning we need to periodically refresh these uh, bit cells of the dram to uh, retain the data actually and also the uh, this uh, charge leaking is directly proportional to the uh, increase in temperature so basically uh, the drams in the automotives have a, a wide range of operating temperatures while in the our consumer pcs or servers we have a uh, very minimal range of temperature uh, modifications happening in the environment but in the automotive environment we can have a very high range of temperature change fluctuation which can happen so the retention time which is actually there in uh, dram can actually differ by much and also the for that we need to uh, manage the refresh rate also dynamically during the run times because uh, if we don't have that uh, refresh time less than the retention time then there are chances of data being uh, erased by the next data because the charge will get leaked another concern with related to dram is the data storage actually so due to the operative uh, environment such complex uh, computation being happening there are chances that data may get corrupted so although in the drams we have uh, uh, error detection and logic related to uh, sb that is single bit error which means that the drams are able to correct the single bit error using the ecc logic also uh, we have something called crc cyclic redundancy check which while performing the write we uh, generate some checksums which the controller of the dram actually compares to uh, generate whether it's a, a, a mismatch or, a, or the data is correct but these things are actually there in hardware which is not efficiently used from the software side it's just a functionality available in the controller but if the uh, automotive environment the situation is such much complex that they don't get that much time to handle these things sometimes so basically uh, there are ways we can use the hardware features to uh, resolve these issues or overcome these issues one of those issue uh, thing is like we can create bit cells that are more temperature resistant uh, we can have error correction within the dram die to correct the bit cells which have lost charges between the refreshes or we can have a uh, error correction logic in the dram itself which can help to uh, detect and report the errors but these things alone uh, individually cannot uh, uh, handle themselves we need a software to enable these hardware features actually so there the uh, use of software in this uh, dram technology comes into the picture so recently like uh, we have few software algorithms which we have used to efficiently do this so one is refresh management algorithm the second is software triggered or periodic training and the third is error reporting mechanism so we will look into one of them each by each so first one is refresh management in kernel so basically we uh, as discussed earlier we have periodic we need periodic refreshes in dram in the wide range of temperature so we need to manage them during run time so we have a logic uh, related to kernel thread so we will have a thread kernel thread where we will periodically do a read of thermal zone temperature so basically in all the socs we have some thermal sensors which uh, reports the nearby temperature of a component so uh, uh, i also we can get the dram temperature also itself but there while doing a dram temperature read there are uh, for a certain period of time we need to send more register command to get the temperature which can actually block the dram access at that point so it's better to use a thermal zone ddr temperature for that so once we read the thermal zone ddr temperature we will get the current refresh rate what is the current refresh rate or the what is the state of the refresh and then accordingly we will compare the current thermal zone temperature rate with the next threshold temperature or the previous threshold temperature so there will be certain threshold temperature we will have for the refresh rates which are already uh, specified by the jdf specifications so based on that we will get to know like whether the te current temperature has gone past the threshold if it has gone past the threshold the higher threshold we will decrease the refresh rate value so that it happens the refresh happens more frequently and if the temperature has gone below the refresh th uh, threshold for the previous state then we will accordingly increase the refresh so that the uh, less the refresh happens less often so that we can have a efficient and robust use of dram it's not like because there is a cost in doing a periodic refresh 
so so as to not have that issue while the dram is operating we need to have a uh, efficient refresh management there not like even if we do quick refreshes it will handle all the case it should not be like if we need a bigger gap for refresh then it's better we we can set that automatically and then we have uh, this basically this is a thread so this uh, logic will be periodically executed and we have ccfs entries also to configure this temperature threshold like if we want to do any experiments or set the environment in a different way based on a temperature we can have the ccfs to change the uh, temperature threshold another process is like uh, software triggered or periodic training in kernel so uh, we have dram timing parameters and phi training parameters which can actually which we have some initial training for it while uh, bringing up the dram but it can actually drift over when we have change in voltages or temperature across the uh, automotive so to handle these we can have uh, we can enable periodic training in the dram which is by default given in the hardware itself but the cost of it is like uh, it can have a performance hit because the periodic training actually at the there can be scenarios when the periodic training is happening at at that time due to large data transmitting over the automotive setup we can have a scenario when that periodic training clashes with that access actually so it may have a performance hit on the dram also so and also the periodic trainings actually will do all the steps of training so we have multiple steps in the training so we have a write training we have a read training then vref training dfe training so these are some internal trainings of dram which fine tunes the dram so actually these uh, all will happen in periodic but if we have a software training uh, trigger training we can actually overcome these issues we uh, by our own means we can trigger a training at a certain point also we can keep certain things enabled during the training we can if we want to disable few things we have the functionality or the control to make that happen actually uh, similar to the refresh management here also we will get the thermal zone ddr temperature then accordingly we will check this uh, therm uh, current temperature with the previous temperature and then see how much temperature change has happened and with the specified delta thermal threshold we will compare that temperature change and if we think the temperature is more than the delta thermal threshold then we will perform the uh, training accordingly like we will first trigger the read training once it is done we will trigger write training and this logic is periodically executed so and this temperature threshold is also programmable so based on the automotive environment we can lower or the Uh, increase the temperature threshold accordingly yeah so uh, next is uh, ecc error reporting kernel so uh, we have like in the hardware we have few features like ecc code generation ecc code comparison and the flagging of the errors or correcting if it's a correctable error but here with the hardware we have added some support in kernel where we will register some interrupts for those errors then we will accordingly on error getting generated we will report those errors and based on what error it is we may do uh, a kernel panic or a soc reset or any other functions we want to do for a specific function so for a good error uh, handling we need a software support along with the hardware feature already there in dram so basically the ecc code generators are uh, generated by the controller based on the right data and the memory stores both the uh, uh, this ecc code as well as the written data and when the read happens the controller actually reads both the data as well as the uh, generated ecc code and then from the read data he uh, the controller again generates a new ecc code so as to compare it with the previous ecc code so uh, so as to check whether there is a data mismatch or not if there is a data mismatch it will uh, Uh, say that the uh, error is generated and if it's not a data mismatch then it's fine the data is fine so for this we have a mechanism called segdate which is a single error logic and a double error logic so basically we have two kinds of uh, errors single bit error and double bit error so single bit errors are correctable errors and double bit errors are uncorrectable errors so by itself dram controller has the feature to detect the single bit error and Uh, correct it also but the double bit error cannot be corrected by the controllers so we will have the register uh, we will in, so from the software side we will 
register the interrupts for both correctable as well as uncorrectable errors. And when the error is generated, uh, the handlers will log all the errors related to that, all the information we need. Uh, then we can report also the correctable and uncorrectable errors similarly from the handler. And accordingly, whatever the error is, we can generate a kernel panic as well, as well or issue a uh, SOC reset for that. So basically, we have some e EDAC drivers in kernel, which uh, has similar mechanisms to these, but uh, we are not directly using the EDAC mechanism, but we are taking some reference from the e EDAC drivers to actually uh, implement these. Yeah, so uh, finally, I would like to say that DRAM devices are one of the enabling technologies for the automotive. Uh, it actually uh, will help to improve the safety and the enhance the feature and uh, make the um, autonomous driving more convenient. And with the more uh, careful hardware design and safe process and the efficient software, uh, we can put the DRAMs into uh, safety critical areas of the automobile so as to provide uh, high bandwidth and high uh, memory to the uh, system which the soc which is running in the uh, automotive uh, so these are some of the references i have taken actually to make this ppt so um, these are the links so i have put it here uh, thank you any questions please okay thank you thank you